Hello everybody and welcome back. I am your host, So Not The Hero Type, and we're going to be talking about editing rockets and downrange and stuff like that, but we built this in the last episode, so I figured we should probably launch it real quick. So here's a highly sped up version of me launching this rocket as I uh, mumble through the introduction and yeah, getting tons of science, getting tons of funding, all is good. This is one of your biggest launches you'll do early game and the rocket's now blown up. So let's go ahead and go over to the KSC and get started. Okay, so in the last episode, we uh, built this rocket and grabbed the contract, but we're going to be talking the downrange variation of this rocket. Uh, one of the big updates with RP-1 was you have to have control of the rocket for at least 50 seconds, which is the whole reason I had to kind of restart the series. Now, we're also going to be grabbing the suborbital trajectory because a downrange rocket is essentially a suborbital trajectory. Um, as long as you meet the parameters, it's actually fairly easy. So we're going to grab this major milestone contract because it's worth a lot of money. And then we're going to go ahead and grab one of these downrange ones. Uh, we're just going to probably grab the intermediate one for now, just because we're going to kind of go over it. We could probably do the expert one if we really wanted to. Now, once we accept this contract, you're going to see all of the other ones disappear. And I'm actually going to go over that in a short and kind of explain how that works. Um, and actually how to stack contracts and stuff. That's something that we're going to kind of go over. I want to do it in a short because there's a lot of detail I want to talk about on it. And again, I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter overall, just so they don't drag on for 30, 40 minutes. Anyways, the first thing we're going to do now that we have that contract is we're going to duplicate the rocket in queue and then we're going to edit one of them. I typically do that because it makes the process a little bit easier and I kind of want to show you guys how to edit your rockets. So you click this edit button up here. And that's how you do an edit. But first we're going to duplicate it and then we're going to go back to that first one in queue and then we're going to edit it and go to the VAB. So let's go ahead and hop over there now. And with some simple movie magic, we are here. So the first thing we need to do is right click on this avionics probe and we need to make it controllable. So we're going to switch over to near earth and we're going to hit select start. And this is going to turn it into a controllable avionics core. Now we need to make sure it can control the total mass of our ship. And keep in mind, once we actually, you know, configure this thing, it's going to make the craft way more. So we're going to pull up this RP1 screen and I'm going to cut in real fast and kind of show you these things up close real quick. So we're going to start here. You have the controllable mass, the electric charge amount, and additional tank volume. Just leave the additional tank volume to zero and then set your electric charge and that should automatically adjust. Sometimes it doesn't and you have to kind of adjust it yourself, but we're going to go over the basics real quick. Now, once you put the controllable mass in and you hit apply, it's going to change the size of the avionics unit, which is why you want to look at this screen over here. Now, you click on the little RP1 tab, which I'll show you in a second, and you'll see the supports and the vessel weight. Now, the reason I recommend using this is because the total weight and the vessel weight are two different things because the total weight includes launch clamps and stuff like that, and you don't need to have avionics for launch clamps. So always have this pulled up when you're adjusting because it will tell you if you have sufficient avionics or not. You can get to this menu simply by clicking this icon here. And now that that is out of the way, let's go ahead and get back to what we're doing. So I'm going to set this for a little over my vessel weight because again, it's going to become a little bigger and set the electric charge at 300 or less. Now, once I click apply, you see that it actually got bigger and it made our vehicle weigh more. But we're still within the sufficient range, which is why I always go a little bit over. We will have to retool this, and it's going to be about 2100 funds, so always make sure it's ready beforehand. Always test before you tool. That is, if I can give you any advice, simulate your rockets until they're ready, and then tool it. Now, let's go over to this suborbital thing. Now, essentially, a suborbital launch is a downrange rocket that goes over 140 kilometers and you recover the probe. So what we're going to do is we're going to slap a parachute onto the bottom of this avionics core. It should be able to take the re-entry heating. I'm going to go into the quick actions and actually configure it by clicking on it. I always make sure this is on wet mass and then I go ahead and hit apply settings. As long as it says success, you're good to go. If you try to use too small of a parachute on too big of an item, it won't work. The reason I say wet mass is because you have the sounding payload in the rocket that does have a weight and it won't be draining. So you want to set it up for wet mass. You can use any type of decoupler you want. I like to use the ring decoupler because it adds a little more realism since it does have that little bit of tuck space for the parachute. But to be honest, clipping in RO is pretty common. So just take that as you will and just do what you like aesthetically. 
Always check your staging as well. I mean, Scott Manley said it, he's the god of KSP. Check your staging. So anyways, we have a basic controllable rocket built. It's good enough to do a sounding payload contract. Uh, we're gonna kind of rename it just so I can separate it. Someone's gonna make it C or something. But I recommend you tilt the rocket. Now our wings are still set up for spin stability. So you can still use spin stability and not control the rocket if you want to and just have the control little avionics on there for contract purposes. Or if you wanna control the rocket, always give it a small tilt. These rockets have a lot of thrust to weight and you can tip them and flip them really easily, so you gotta turn very slowly. Usually I start with a slight tilt to my rocket so it starts on the downrange trajectory. Uh, always play around with this in Crash 2 and see what fits better. You're not so much focused on altitude, you're focused on downrange. In fact, anything over 200 kilometers is kind of a waste. But there's a handful of depending factors that can nullify that statement. Now, because I added some more weight on the top, you always want to check your center of lift versus your center of mass to make sure the rocket will still be stable. Typically it will be, but it's always a good thing to check. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the spin stability from this rocket because I prefer to fly them manually myself early on. There's a really easy way to do this. Instead of rebuilding a wing you know works, if you actually hit J on the wing, you can go down to the bottom left and hit set as default. When you do that, the next time you grab a wing from the parts inventory tab, it will start off the same design as your current wing. You'll have to repaint it, but this way you're not fighting trying to get that tilt off, especially if you did it without snap. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and grab a procedural wing from the parts inventory real fast. And you're going to see that it's this big square looking deal. Now if I hit J and I open this menu up and go to set to defaults, I always click it a hundred times for some reason. The next wing you grab will be the same exact wing. You can easily just take it off and then remount the wings back onto your craft. I am still having issues with editor redux, so sorry. And once we get these set up, we still have good stability, but we no longer have spin stability because we have a controllable avionics core. I'm also gonna set these up at a 45 degree rather than a 90 degree angle because I don't want the wings to catch that launch clamp. So make sure you don't have a wing sitting completely under it because even though it drops, it can still catch it and knock you off balance. And that usually ends pretty badly. Now, you'll see that I'm rechecking my center of thrust and center of lift and stuff because I want to make sure the wings are set correctly since I moved them. Um, I'm overly picky when it comes to this stuff, so just make sure your center of lift stays below your center of mass and you should be good to go. Now, we pretty much have a decently set up downrange rocket and we're pretty much wrapped up. So, as always, simulate it, see how it works, play with it, get a feel for the rocket before you just go and build it and launch it. For time constraint reasons, I'm not gonna go over all of the simulations, but I kind of just keep adjusting the angle until I have something I like. If you can get it to do about 200 kilometers altitude and about 400 plus meters downrange, you have yourself a really good starting rocket. So I finalized this and let's go back over to the KSC. Now you might need to rename that rocket because when you edit it, it sometimes doesn't save that name change. Always keep that in mind and when you edit a rocket you always want to make sure that you put it back up to the top of the queue now we're gonna buy some upgrade points the reason I wait to do this is because I want to make sure I can tool my rocket before spending a bunch of money basically an upgrade points cost you about 20,000 funds and you put them into each either R&D or VAB or in my case the SPH VAB and R&D now you always want to try to balance these early I typically by like 1953 go a little heavier into R&D just to get my research going because once you unlock a bunch of it you just kind of want to get it kicked out as much as possible to give you a quick idea this is how long all of this is going to take and it only does one at a time so the sooner you can get this research done and get your upgrades moving the faster you can develop another little tip is every time you get 20 science points you get a free upgrade point so always watch out for that now i'm going to go ahead and finish spinning my points um, i want to be down to at least 20,000 funds so i have enough to get a handful of points and kind of split them up but you really don't need more more than 15 to 20,000 funds. Anything else is just kind of wasting space when you could be using it to build rockets faster and speed your tech up. As you see here, my tech has actually gone down a few days because of that extra R&D point. Another reason it's good to do a few extra points in the VAB early on is because controllable avionics take a lot longer to build. In this case, there's almost two months time difference between the science core and the controllable core but we will need to use a controllable rocket. Now I'm gonna duplicate a couple of these rockets that have backups. You always want something in your build, build queue, no matter what, always. Just always try to have something building. Let's go ahead and fast forward and get this onto the launch pad so I can kind of show you guys what a decent downrange rocket looks like. 
Now that little box up on the top left is a flight recorder. You can open that by going to the MechJeb drop down menu above and click flight recorder and this will show you like downrange and a bunch of other cool stuff. I kind of touched on it in the last other episode. Anyways, we're gonna make sure our science is up. We're gonna ignite the engine, give it a second and then go ahead and launch. Now I have SAS turned on and when I get to about 2000 meters, I'm going to lock prograde. The reason for this is it will be the most aerodynamically stable profile and the rocket will naturally tip itself giving us more downrange, which is why I typically start with a slight tilt from the launch clamps. It kind of helps get that prograde marker in the direction you want, and that's why you always want to play around with the crash. As you see now, we have a lot of aerodynamic resistance, so trying to manually steer this thing is going to be a pain in the butt, and we risk the chance of destroying it. Now, I'm going to speed the footage up here in a second, but I wanted to kind of touch on a few things. Notice my speed. I'm under 600 meters a second right now, and I'm almost at 10 kilometers. Now, I know you think downrange you want to be at more of an angle, but in reality, you don't want to be going faster than about 1200 to 1300 meters a second anywhere under the 20,000 meter line the amount of drag you'll receive being that low in the atmosphere will actually reduce your downrange capabilities and it can also lead to the rocket overheating and exploding sometimes that doesn't show up in a simulation so always keep that in mind now we're pretty much done with our burn i'm going to go ahead and kind of fast forward through the whole arc thing and we're going to slow down when we get pretty much to the top of our trajectory now we're a little bit farther along in the launch and I'm going to deattach the payload section once I get to pretty much the very top of my orbit because it can give you a little bit of a kick to give you a little, it's a very small amount of downrange, but it could be the difference to complete the contract. Now we're going to pause here for a second because I want to show you kind of an easy way when you're doing simulations to test your downrange capability. Now we're pretty much at the top of our orbit and we've gone downrange about 136 kilometers. So once you kind of get to this point, in theory, you could go about twice that distance for the rest of your launch. If you're trying to simulate something to get a certain level of downrange, a really good way to test it without doing the launch completely is go, I made it 200 kilometers downrange at the top of my orbit, so I should be able to reach a total of about 385 to 390. It saves a little time, but if you are new, I do recommend you spend a lot of time using simulations to kind of get used to flying the crafts. Now we're gonna go ahead and just kind of phase through to the rest of the launch because I actually wanted to put one more thing in this episode, but I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and recover this. I'm gonna show you a little trick about recovering things for the first time. And then we're gonna talk about using the same rocket to build different variations to do contracts that pay out much better. So because we recovered something that was on a suborbital flight, we actually get eight extra points of science that does go down over time but it's a nice little kicker early on and we actually got a free upgrade point because of that now i'm going to be going over uh, spinning science points in a short that should be released shortly after this video so we're going to skip past that for now spend our upgrade point and talk about the more advanced contracts now because we did the suborbital return launch we've unlocked new contracts such as biological sample and low res film return these are basically launches where you add certain science experiments and you recover them just the same way we did with that suborbital launch. But you don't actually have to control the rocket. Let me show you an easy way to deal with this. Now we're going to start off with our science core uh, rocket because it's easier to deal with a rocket that's sitting vertically and then tilt it later. And there's a few things I want to go over. One, we have an engine upgrade and I'm going to use it to give us a little bit more of a kick. You go ahead and you open this menu up, you go down to engines and then there will be a purchase upgrade option. It's always good to upgrade these engines when you can. They're usually more efficient and you can get better Delta V out of them. It's also typically cheaper to upgrade an engine versus purchasing a new engine, which is why I like the RD100 so much is it has so many variants. You could pretty much use it through the entire sounding rocket section of the game. But because we have a, a better or a more advanced engine, we're going to want to stretch the tank and we're actually going to change the tank type because we unlocked new materials as well. The tooling cost will be more for the new tank type, but because we already have this diameter, it'll still be cheaper overall to make it longer with the new tank type versus trying to make the rocket wider. Plus that camera unit is the perfect size for our current diameter. So we're gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little bit. We're not gonna hit the full burn time, but we're gonna give it a little more length and we're gonna make sure that the wings are still stable enough to keep it from going out of control. Now I'm gonna go ahead and simulate this rocket a couple of times, make sure it's all good to go, and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to make those variants, and then that's pretty much gonna be the end of the episode. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we're back, we're gonna go ahead and do the camera variation first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off 
the avionics in the tank and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera module and put it on here and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the avionics below it and then attach a parachute the avionics has a slightly higher heat rating so I prefer to keep it on the bottom but honestly you can do it either way as before we're gonna make sure the parachute set up correctly and then we're gonna slap a decoupler underneath this so it can actually separate from the rest of the rocket we're essentially rebuilding the downrange rocket that can be recovered, but we're adding a camera. That's all we're really doing. Um, you always want to check your wing profile too once you do this, just to make sure it's still stable because there's a little more weight on top. I do test this and crash later and it, it's fine. Now, we're going to be using spin stability. If you want to be more realistic, you can make this controlled and manually fly it so the camera's not spinning because in reality it wouldn't actually be able to take photos when it's spinning. But we're new here, so this is an easy way to get this done without spending a bunch of extra money. As I always say though, play the game how you want. Now because this is spin stabilized, we do need to pre-angle the rocket, which I usually recommend either way, but we have to actually send it on a trajectory to get it down range. So you will have to test this and make adjustments to that tilt as you go. And then kind of once you get it to where it can go over 400 kilometers down range, you're usually in a pretty good spot, at least for the first two contracts. But I'll be touching on that on a later episode when I talk purely just about contracts. So anyways, this rocket is pretty much wrapped up. So let's go ahead and talk about the bio sample variation of the rocket. Now there are a couple ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you the cheaper, easier way to do it. So like before, we're going to go ahead and take off the avionics in the tank and we're going to go grab this little truss unit. We're going to be using this as kind of like a shelter for the biological sample because it's so small. Now the other option is you could use one of these procedural uh, hollow, hollow rings. In fact, I grabbed the wrong one. You want the inner stage. And you could technically make yourself a little section to put the biological sample inside of. It's kind of a bad idea, and I'm going to speed through this next part so I can kind of show you what I mean by that. Now that I have this shape the way I want to, I need to take a fairing piece and attach it. And this is kind of why this becomes a bad idea. Bearings are extremely expensive to tool. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this a single fairing side, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the tooling cost because it is astronomical, which is why I don't recommend you do this. Just to tool the fairings by themselves, it's over 5,000 funds, and that's kind of a waste of money because you'll really only be able to use those for a very limited amount of things. So a better alternative is to use this truss piece, size it to the 1.25, and then put the biological sample unit inside. And I'm gonna kind of show you how I do that because I do clip it a little bit. Not only does it keep the rocket's profile correct, it also looks a lot better. It's a lot cheaper and it's a lot easier to do. I normally use the BD variant because it's like just almost just the right height to tuck everything in. And the best part is trusses are typically used as decouplers, but you can disable that, which I'll go through in just a moment after I put the rest of this rocket together. Like before, we're gonna attach the avionics core, make sure the parachute's set up correctly, add that decoupler unit and then slap the base of the rocket back on. I'm speeding through this part for time reasons since we just did this with the other rocket. Now we have these two decoupling stages. You could one put this decoupling stage in a empty box by itself above the parachute and just never use it or two you could right click on the decoupler. There's actually two different areas of staging you could enable or disable which are these buttons right here. But with that being said this is pretty much a done rocket. I'm gonna test it crash a little bit. I recommend you do the same thing kind of build it as you want but keep in mind you can use one base rocket to do several different variables variations of contracts with minimal spending that being said that episode is pretty much over so i want to thank you guys again for stopping by i've been your host so not the hero type if you like the video feel free to give it a like and if you want to see more feel free to subscribe and i hope i see you next time and how to rp1 chapter 3